Hey everybody, welcome to our week of uh, Puppy Day School. Today we are going to be talking about tips and tricks for rainy day activities. So I have a bunch of different things that we are setting up for the puppies to um, practice a little bit of entertainment, mental stimulation, and um, getting your puppy just like happy to just relax when maybe you can't get out and about. So it doesn't always have to be a rainy day. Maybe you're not feeling well. Maybe it's just a day you want to just chill out and here are some different um, things that we can do. So right here on the counter, I have um, a bunch of lick mats that I've already set up. Um, these all have different kind of patterns in them. Some of them like this one is a little bit more uh, set up so that you could put in kibble or little treats. I'm just using peanut butter today, but in the lick mats, you could use canned food. Um, you could use a little bit of cream cheese, anything that's soft that you can get into the little grooves. If you have a dog that's really experienced at these, once you make them, you could freeze them. So it takes them a lot longer and it's a little bit more challenging. Um, in addition to that, I have a bowl that is called a slow feeder bowl. And any of your dogs that are voracious eaters should could really benefit from eating out of a slow feeder bowl. And by that kind of dog, I'm talking about you. Yeah, that dog, any dog that can eat their food in like two seconds should be using some variety of a slow feeder bowl. This is just one example. Then I've got some other things that we can take a look at. These are all different food dispensers or treat dispensers. So this one, the bottom screws off. You can put kibble in here and then it comes out when the dog tugs or rolls this uh, this canister around. It's challenging. This one's a little challenging. It's also really loud because um, the dogs a lot of times will grab the rope toy and start thrashing it around and banging it. This is old school Kong. Again, you can fill these with multiple layers of things, food, treats, peanut butter, canned food. You could can freeze these. These are great. Um, Again, they can be a little challenging if your dog isn't used to figuring out how to get the food out. Um, another example of a food dispenser. Food comes in, the dog has to roll the, um, the little dice thing around in order to get the kibble out. So these are a couple examples. We're gonna see them in action in just a second. All right, so we have each of the puppies set up with a lick mat. And I kind of tried to rub some kibble in there because I didn't have any canned food. So these aren't going to last all that long because really it's just peanut butter with a few pieces of kibble that are scattered on the top. Um, so I could probably, how long, how long do you think it would take uh, Mavis to go through one of these? Like one of these ones, if it's like got canned food in it and it's frozen, probably like... 20, 25 minutes? Yeah, so I mean, again, this is only gonna last us a, a pretty short a period of time because I just put the most, the easiest thing to get out of it, which is peanut butter, and it's not frozen. So it's the kind of thing though that we can really make much more challenging if we want. Uh, so lick mats, fantastic game plan for rainy day or lazy day activities. What you need to know about your puppies is that not only is this just a method of distributing kind of treats and food, as is say my, um, my slow feeder bowl, but it's mental stimulation. And mental stimulation is really important for any dog of any age and does tire them out, not in the same way that Marley's like, yeah, I don't know, man. Who doesn't love a peanut butter situation? Yeah, seriously. Who does not love a peanut butter situation? I know who does. You do. You do. So anytime we're talking about rainy day or activities, we're talking about things that we that don't require the dog to be doing the zoomies or running around so much as it is. What can we do to tire them out mentally? So here we go. 
All right, so now what we're doing is another exercise I like to practice. Sometimes we, oh, very nice. Good job, Haley. Um, we like to refer to it as Zen Den, where what we're doing is we're just sitting. This would be an opportunity where you can work on longevity of, say, a down. All we're doing is we're taking their food for a meal. So let's say their dinner, instead of just putting their dinner on the floor, we are working on just getting the puppies to learn to relax. Believe me, they do not want to be hanging out doing nothing right now. They'd love to be zooming around. But what we can do is we can just take that food and we can take pieces at a time. And the better they get, the more, the better that they get at this, the more we can spread out the time between um, the kibble. So they're learning just to hang out, but we're doing a lot of rewarding pretty heavily in the beginning. Haley. And it's hard. It's hard when other dogs are around because it's, they feel like, why? Do I need to get in there faster to get my cookies? Oh, very nice, Ginger. You curled up on that little bed, so cute. Good job. So we wait for them to offer a nice behavior. Miss Attention Span Deficit Disorder right here. Haley. Yes. So again, she offers it down really quickly. In the beginning, I want to give her pretty rapid fire treats to get her to just stay down there and relax. And, ah, ah. Hey. Down. Oh, so he's getting frustrated. Uh-uh. Good job, Ginger. Can you lie down? Mm -hmm. No, no taking fingers. You, Finn. Good job. Haley, down. Good job, Ginger. There you go. So this is obviously a more interactive version of like a lick mat. But it's also building attention span for the dogs to work with you. Ginger hasn't got that. I mean, Ginger. Um, Haley hasn't got that memo yet. <laughs> Haley, attention span. <laughs> Haley, sit. Yes. Good girl. Touch. Touch. Oh, and you can, you know, if, if it's if it's really hard for your dog to remain in a down, you can do what I just did for a second, add a couple hand targets in. You don't have to build distance. You don't have to do anything other than just break things up a little bit, giving her an opportunity to do a different behavior. Very nice. Good job, guys. Now, the one thing we do need to be careful about here is when we start getting behaviors that we don't necessarily love. Um, so when this gets really frustrating and the dog starts whining or barking at you, things like that, you know, we want to try to keep the dog at a successful pace or we want to try to reward at a successful pace, but we also want to make this challenging. And because Finn is so food motivated, we just want to make sure we're not rewarding him while he starts to have a little bit of a tizzy fit and then allow him to relax a little bit and then come back and start giving him attention when he's really nicely laying quietly. Physical babies. Ginger, you're doing such a good job on your little donut bed. Do you like your little donut bed? Good job. So Haley's finally getting the game. As long as you don't move, you get the most amount of kibble. She's doing really well. She's finally settled in. This is the longest she's held her down without just getting up and popping around and jumping. Finn's doing well. Again, we just wait for them to settle back down.